and welcome back to Ladies Can We Talk. This is Debbie George Avis. I'm so glad you've tuned in tonight. We have a guest with us on the line tonight, and this is a actually a friend of mine I've known for several years, and actually I think I've been on his radio show, but this is a Dallas uh, radio host named Grant Stinchfield. Hi, Grant. Hi, Debbie. It's great to be on with you. And yes, you have been on my radio show. I thought so. Okay. Well, you know what? I uh, had emailed Grant earlier in the week, and I wanted to talk with, uh, I'll just quick tell our listeners, Grant is a radio host. He's a business owner, and he also ran for U.S. Congress uh, in 2012, I think, in Texas District 24. And so he's been through an actual primary. Um, and so I thought it was really interesting. that, And, and he's a, just a political activist and a conservative. So, Grant, you wrote a column that was appeared, actually got printed in The Federalist called I Regret Voting for Donald Trump. And I thought it was interesting that even a person would take the time to write that up versus just think about it. So what made you want to write that? Well, you know, I write a weekly a weekly column called Grant's Rant for, for 570 KLIF, and, and the Federalist picked it up. And, and uh, I, I just felt like I had to put on paper my frustration with the Trump campaign and why I was originally drawn to it. And, and I mean, the bottom line, there was one quote in, in that article that I wrote was that I let my anger get the best of me. And I was convinced that, that Donald Trump would hire great people and that he was this great CEO. He was going to surround himself with great people and he, and he was going to find the good conservatives to join his campaign. And though I knew that his conservative credentials were questionable at best, I thought that my whole burning desire to just blow up Washington as we know it and stick it to the ruling class of career politicians up there, who better to do that than Donald Trump? But here we are seven months later, and he's put nobody of substance around him. There's been no real policy advancement with Donald Trump, and he makes me very, very nervous. So, so now I regret voting for Donald Trump, and I actually put in a column that I apologize publicly to both Governor Scott Walker and Governor Rick Perry for not giving them the chance they were due early on. Well, I think it's so interesting what you say about Donald Trump's campaign, because I think a lot of people who are Tea Party supporters or just conservative uh, members of the GOP, they're conservative activists, there has been growing during the entire two terms of President Obama's presidency, just a growing grassroots um, frustration with Washington. And in part, it is with the American left, the direction that President Obama is taking this country in terms of you know, heading towards socialism and big taxes and, and poor uh, and weak foreign policy. Just name your issue. It seems to be on and Obamacare. But on the right, the frustration has been not seeing the GOP in Washington stand up for the principles the party claims it stands for, for, the, for conservative principles, which I think is part of why you ran for Congress, right? It, it is. And I, I just wanted someone to speak plainly to the American people. When I ran for Congress, uh, that was something I promised to do, that I was going to just speak in plain English and break things down in a form that was very, very simple. And when Donald Trump broke on the scene, he was doing that, and he still continues to do that. And he has some tremendous attributes, and I think it's refreshing to see a guy that speaks speaks his mind. But this far down the road, when you're speaking your mind and having to retract the next day, you're not knowing what you're talking about, um, it, it's it's upsetting to me to see this. And and Ted Cruz, who I think, Debbie, when I was running for, for, for Congress in 2012, um, I was a supporter of Ted Cruz. I think you supported Ted Cruz yes, in, I did. In, in that run. And, you know, I watched him today on, on the Fox Sunday morning with Chris Wallace show, and I watched him there, and he did what every politician do. He didn't answer one question directly, not one. And I said, what is happening? Is Ted Cruz now turning into to a career politician who just will not talk straight to the American people? And so I'm totally frustrated. Uh, and, and I will support whoever is the nominee. There is no doubt about it. And I think every Republican, every conservative needs to do that. But uh, there's a complete frustration with me right now. Well, you know, that answer of questions is interesting. Even on the debate stage when we had 17 candidates running, some of them seem to do a fairly good job. of. And I really, I, I kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, hold Carly Fiorina in especially high regard on that subject. It seemed like no matter what the question was, she went to the answer. She didn't try to say, well, thank you for the question. Now let me talk about something else. She answered the question. So I do think 
people are frustrated by that. Um, I have to say, I, I did support Ted Cruz in his Senate run. And in this case, in this campaign, I have supported him from the start of this presidential campaign because I think he brings the combination of understanding the Constitution, and which I, I think is vital to restore our government or our constitutional government. Um, I do find that with many cam- candidates, and sometimes I do see it in Ted Cruz, that they're not answering the question. And I, I think that's something they all need to work on. But So let me ask you this, though. So here we are. I gave a speech yesterday, and when the Q&A part, this lady said, so... Um, and, and it was really just about preserving America and why it's great and how you, you know, how, why America is exceptional and how you hold on to it. It was really kind of more about ideas. So this lady's question was, and I'm going to ask you this, Grant, said, so if Donald Trump wins the nomination, how do you convince people to vote for him? So I'm curious how you'd answer that. Well, so I asked people, is Donald Trump better than Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders would be? And now if you take Donald Trump on the face of of his word, which I don't even know that you can do, but if you do and you give him the benefit of the doubt, well, then clearly he's going to be better than Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. Um, Even if he goes back on his word, what we really need is a Republican president. So so if we control the House and we control the Senate and we send legislation to the White House, at least we have somebody who can sign the bottom of that legislation and put it into action and hopefully repeal some of this other stuff that needs repealing. So so the end result is – He's far better off than than Hillary Clinton is going to ever, ever be. And and if anybody starts talking about this idea that they're going to sit out the Never Trump campaign, I I, I think it is ridiculous because our nation's future is at stake. And I know we say it's the most important election of our time. This one is. But it is. It is again. (laughs) Again. Again it is. And so, look, both of these candidates have, have, have great attributes. And so what really angers me is the hatred and vitriol on either side. Look, there's no such thing as a perfect candidate. Ronald Reagan's not coming back from the dead, and neither is John Wayne. And so there's no perfect candidate out there. And so I would hope that the Cruz supporters, the Trump supporters could see the positives on either side and say, hey, once we get to a final vote on this thing, let's get behind the guy and and make something happen. And the fact that people would literally think they're going to sit on the sidelines or want someone to run as a third-party candidate uh, will hand the White House over to Hillary Clinton. Exactly. I'm so glad you're saying this because I've had the same – I was going to ask you the same question. So what do you say to Trump supporters if Cruz wins the nomination? But my answer yesterday was essentially the same as yours. You have to vote for the bigger picture. You have to vote for the party that's at least supposed to stand for the right things, and they've got a body of people in the House and Senate to back them. You can't just vote for the person. You have to vote for the ideals that should be higher than the person. Do you know what I think the supporters on both sides should take a cue from? They're both trying to out, out establishment the other, saying, oh, the Cruz supporters and Cruz are saying Donald Trump's the establishment. Trump is saying now Cruz is out. Let me tell you something. These two guys are so far from the establishment. Yes. Ted Cruz is not the establishment. They hate him in Washington. You heard what John Boehner said about him. And believe me, Donald Trump is not the establishment either. He may know how to work the system, but he is not the establishment. And they, they are having their nightmare scenario in front of them, and I truly believe that there are some Republican leaders in Washington who would rather see Hillary Clinton. Because you want to talk about the establishment and business as usual, that's what you're going to get with Hillary Clinton. You know, we have only about two minutes left in this segment, but I definitely want you just hit on what I wanted to talk about, which was a lot of commentary about the idea that some people in the establishment, and by this I mean members of the U.S. House who are geo- Republican, House, U.S. Senate, establishment in Washington, people would say, Donald Trump, either Donald Trump or Ted Cruz will so upset the apple cart here, I'll take Hillary. At least I know what to expect, and she won't take me out of my happy, uh, to use Ted Cruz's term, my Washington cartel space I have. And we have about one minute, but I I am concerned about that, and I think it's crazy. You agree? Uh, I agree. It's completely crazy. I think we can throw out whatever any incumbent congressman says right now. Do you know they just voted the bison to be the national mammal? Do you know we have ISIS we're dealing with? We've got a $19 trillion debt, and they're voting on the bison as the national mammal? Congress is whacked out, and they are messed up, and something's got to be done. So I wouldn't take their word for anything, Debbie. Well, I agree. And, you know, one other thought, and we really are real close to the end, but I tried to talk in the star of this show about the John Boehner statement, uh, that his Lucifer statement about Ted Cruz. And I said, what you're really hearing is the extreme frustration of the establishment because what— 
what we ended up having the um, Ted Cruz do in Washington was expose on both sides in the House and the Senate, expose the fact that most of GOP doesn't want to fight on principle, and Ted Cruz embarrassed them by fighting on principle. And I think that's what John Boehner is saying is, how dare you make me look bad? I don't know if you have, you have about 30 seconds. Do you have a quick thought about that? Well, you know what? It, it was the greatest compliment that Ted Cruz could have got. But when I ran for Congress, I didn't get the endorsement of the Dallas Morning News. You know why? They called me a Jim DeMint conservative. You and, go. And boy, that's the greatest compliment <laughs> you can get. Absolutely. Grant Stinchfield, thank you so very much for being with us today.